Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Notes from the Sewing Room, my name's Becky. Today's video is all about what I was making in December. I managed to squeeze in quite a few projects over the course of the month, which I was quite surprised about to be honest, because I was baking, doing the usual stuff around Christmas. Even though we couldn't really go out anywhere this year and see friends and family that we'd usually see, I still seem to be really busy doing bits and bobs in the house, and of course being a new mum is quite busy in itself. But I am really impressed with the amount of things that I managed to squeeze in so I've decided to split my December makes video into two parts. So this is the first part so I really hope that you enjoy watching and you enjoy learning about what I was making. Christmas is definitely one of my favourite times of year and I'm always a little bit sad when it's over but we are into the new year so onwards and upwards so let me show you what I was making during December. For those of you who are interested I am wearing one of my Sew Over It Edie tops today in this lovely bright bold print so I don't know about you but I love to wear bright colours and it really just makes me feel happy and cheerful and I feel like we all need a little bit of cheer in our lives at the moment so as soon as I saw this I had to snap it up so this was actually a remnant that I bought from Crafty So and So a while ago I'm just going to hold this up closer to the camera so you can actually see but it's kind of like a doodle print it's got little clouds on there and little rainbows and butterflies and flowers and stars and all kinds of different things but just works really well for this project. The Edie top is super speedy to make if you haven't tried it. It's got this lovely boat neckline here and it just looks perfect with jeans and denim skirts and all sorts so I'm wearing a homemade denim skirt today and this is one of my absolute staples. I love it. It's a camby skirt. So this is actually a camby skirt hack, shall I say, that I did. So this is using the Sewaholic camby dress pattern and I turned it into a skirt by basically using the A-line skirt version and I added on a waistband. So it's really super simple to do and I recommend you trying out that pattern if you haven't used it before. Don't forget, if you do enjoy watching this video today, please do press the like button and subscribe to my channel. I really do appreciate everyone who watches all of my videos and it's really important to me that you do enjoy what you see as well so please do leave me a comment below and let me know what you're making at the moment and if you do enjoy what you're seeing today and if you've got any questions at all just let me know and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. Right, let me show you what I've been up to. So some of these projects will be familiar to you if you did watch my December last minute sewing plans for Christmas video. So this is a project that I've made for my husband and it's a bird pattern. It's a pattern that I've actually made before, but it's, it's a classic really and it's one that my husband absolutely loves so I'm sure I will make it again. So it is a little bit creased. It's the Birda Young super easy pattern here. It's a sweatshirt pattern and it's number 6718. So I'll just hold that up so you can see it there. So there's two different versions in the pattern pack and I actually made the version with the hood. So I decided to leave the, um, the strings off the hood this time because my husband didn't really like them last time I added those in and to be honest he pulled the little cord out. So it was it's a bit of a waste of time me kind of threading it all through and whatnot so I just decided to not bother with that this time um, and also you may remember me saying in my uh, December plans video that this hoodie is supposed to have a pocket on the front but every time I make Neil a jumper that's got some kind of pouch on the front he fills it with all kinds of junk from around the house and when I'm doing the washing I pull out you know bits of old tissue and bits of you know food and honestly I found all kinds of things in there the other day I found an apple core and a bit of old string so I don't know where he picks the stuff up from honestly so I decided that even though he probably quite likes the pouch for putting things in I've left it off this time because it's just a nuisance for me and the amount of time I've ended up with things in the washing machine that shouldn't have been in there because they were in his pouch it's just silly really uh, <laughs> so yeah so this is a great pattern I definitely recommend it if you want to make it for yourself or for, for someone else in your life it's a it's a really good pattern it comes together really quickly I made it in a lovely sweatshirt jersey that I bought from eBay so it's a I think it was described as a premium jersey but it's kind of a normal sweatshirt jersey to be honest 
although it has started to bobble slightly. I'm thinking of buying a de-bobbler for, for different things that I've made. So I don't know if you've ever bought a de-bobbler. If you have, then do let me know what kind you bought and if you do think they actually work or not, because I am tempted to invest in one of those because quite a few things that I've made recently do seem to be bobbling a little bit. And I do try and get maximum wear out of everything that I'm making for myself and you know, things that my husband's wearing and stuff. So I'd really appreciate it if you do have any views on buying a de-bobbler. But yeah, so this hoodie, I'll hold it up here so you can see it. It's um, obviously got the hood at the top. Um, apologies if you can see any bits on this. I've actually had to take it off my husband to be able to show it to you today. Um, I warned him as well, don't get anything down that hoodie because I want to show it on the video. And he was like, no, of course I won't. I'm like, really? You normally get food down things, but you know, there we are. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to complain. I'm just telling you, uh, you know, how it is really. Um, so yeah, it's got some lovely cuffs on. So they're just really plain cuffs that you've got there. And it's just got the regular hood. I think the nice thing about this pattern is it has got a really nice size hood you know some hoodie patterns the hood does tend to be a little bit on the small side but this one has got um, a lovely decent size hood so I'll just hold that up so you can see it there um, and yeah it's, it's finished with a bottom band and I love the burgundy fabric that we've got here I think it would look perfect on me actually but it looks lovely on my husband I will try and take a picture of him before I put this picture live uh, wearing the hoodie but he doesn't tend to like having his photo taken so we'll see how we go with that but I'll just hold this up to me so you can actually see um, what it's like in full yeah so yeah I made this in the size medium and it works perfectly for Neil so I'm really pleased with that and he was delighted to get that for Christmas I love making homemade things and you know giving homemade things for, for Christmas or for birthdays or for any other occasion basically I just don't really need an excuse to make things for other people if, if I can, um, if I've got something in mind that I want to do for them. So yeah, he, he really loves that pattern and I'm sure I'll make it for him again another time as well. The next thing that I want to show you today is something else that I made for Neil for Christmas. And that is a classic men's t-shirt pattern from this Great British Sewing Bee book, Fashion with Fabric. So you may be familiar with that one. And it's nice to be honest, to be able to use some of my sewing books because I don't know about you, but I've actually got quite a few sewing books on my shelf and I don't tend to get around to making that many things from them. So it's really nice to be able to use a pattern like this one. So this is just the, the classic men's t-shirt pattern. As I said, it's just like that one. I have made this for Neil again a few times before, but he really likes it because one of his main complaints about wearing ready to wear t-shirts is that they're not always that long for him in the body and they tend to pop out of his trousers and he ends up getting a cold back. So the nice thing about this t-shirt is that, you know, it does seem to be that little bit longer that means that, you know, it's not popping out all the time. I decided to make it in a lovely cotton jersey fabric and I went for a mustard. So I'll just reach over and get it for you. So here is the fabric and the t-shirt that I made. I decided to finish it off by adding in one of my Made by Becky labels. I don't know if you can see that just in there. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a lovely, lovely pattern to use. And this fabric I picked up from Material Girl Fabrics. They're based in Nottinghamshire. You can find them on Facebook. So they do have a lovely range of cotton jerseys in there at the moment. Um, I bought this online and yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a lovely, lovely weight fabric. I would describe it as a medium weight cotton jersey fabric. I was actually having a few troubles with my twin needle on my sewing machine when I decided to whip this up for Christmas. So rather than using a twin needle around the hem of the sleeve, I decided to add on a small cuff instead. So I didn't use a pattern piece for that. I literally just drew out the length that I wanted and then added that on. So I just hold that up there so you can see it. And then I decided to make most of my project here on the overlocker, which works really nicely and it makes for a really nice finish on the inside. So the only thing I actually did on my sewing machine was the hem of the t-shirt. So yeah, that worked fine and I just hand stitched the label in at the top. Again, he really was delighted with this for Christmas and he's been wearing it quite a lot as well. The fabric seems to have washed really well and yeah, he's really pleased with it. And to be honest, he'd probably have me make one for him in every single colour that he would like if I had time. I don't really have time to do that for him because I want to make stuff for me and other stuff. And you know what it's like, your sewing list just gets longer and longer and longer. But I will definitely make some more for him at some point. But I really recommend this classic men's t-shirt pattern if you are looking for some kind of staple t-shirt for 
you know, your son or your husband or your boyfriend or your brother or, you know, whoever basically. But it is a really lovely pattern. It says in terms of the difficulty level, beginner with some sewing machine experience. So I definitely think that that is the case. I think anyone could definitely do this one. Even if you are new to sewing, just use a jersey that you can be comfortable with, like a cotton jersey that doesn't move around on your sewing machine too much and you'll be absolutely fine. The next things that I wanted to show you today are some bits and pieces that I made for the house. So these are things that I can literally bring out year after year at Christmas time. I love Christmas decorations and for some reason we didn't have any Christmas stockings but with the arrival of baby William in 2020 I really wanted to make him a lovely Christmas stocking so I thought why not make them for the whole family. So I made one for me, one for my husband and one for William as well. I started off making the one for William and it just kind of went from there. I've got some lovely cotton sateen in my stash. This is a fabric that I bought from Guthrie and Garney ages ago. I think I was planning on making a skirt or something like that. I never got around to it. So I just thought, do you know what? I don't really want to buy any more fabric. I want to try and use up what I've got in my stash for this project. So that's what I did. So this is the one that I made for William. So I decided to use some bias binding to create the W here. And then I just top stitched that all the way around. And I added on these holly decorations and I used some felt to add those on and I just basically cut them out by um, drawing straight onto the, the, the felt and then just top stitch those on as well and then this section around the top is literally just some ribbon and I added on a little handle as well so thank you to everyone who suggested that I could buy stocking handles to or stocking hangers should I say for my mantelpiece I managed to find some of those thank you to everyone who sent me links I really did appreciate that and I ordered a pack of three and they were perfect so that is the first one so you may have seen that one before if you watched one of my previous videos but I don't think you might have seen these other ones so yeah I've made one for me and one for Neil as well so these are slightly different because I didn't have any felt left so this is the one uh, with a B on for Becky and again I just kind of cut that out of some cotton poplin fabric that I had and I've top stitched that on. I did decide to add some interfacing to the back of the B which just to make it a little bit more stable and then I've used a nice fancy stitch to go all the way around and then the centre sections as well. So just hold that up so you can see it a little bit better. And then again, I've used the bias binding to create those lovely kind of shapes on there. And again, it's got a little handle. And then this one is very similar. This is the one that I made for Neil. So again, we've got a lovely N on there for Neil. And then we've got those different green star shapes as well. So he really liked that. They are rather big and didn't really set out to make big stockings, but they did look absolutely super on my mantelpiece. So yeah, I think they will be perfect, just keep using and hopefully William will really love it as well when he kind of really knows what a Christmas stocking is. So it was really exciting though this year having a newborn baby at Christmas time and just having, you know, an extra person in the house and just someone to make a little fuss over. So yeah, it was lovely. The next thing that I want to show you today is another little craft project that I was working on. I did actually make a little tutorial for this on my channel. So if you are interested in how I did this, then do check out my uh, previous video on this. So I decided to make a pom-pom garland. So I was basically just watching TV one night and kind of just thought, oh, wouldn't it be nice to have something a little bit different? Oh, pom-poms. So I just came up with this idea. So I used some bias binding to create the actual string section. So I literally just folded that over and then top stitched it along. I decided to do that rather than using some ribbon just because I thought it would be a little bit more stable. And then I made sure that there was enough at each end to create a little knot section to be able to pop it onto a, a nail that I'd got on the wall just to kind of slot it in basically and then as you'll see here I've used uh, lots of different types of wool so different colored wools that I already had any kind of wool would be absolutely fine for this project that you've got maybe left over from a knitting project or a craft project so it doesn't have to be special wool at all and then you can create one of these lovely lovely garlands so I'm really pleased with that and to be honest, if I had more time, I might have made some for other areas of the house as well, but that looked really nice up in my living room. I hung it up in between two pictures, a little bit like the pictures you can see in the background with the bunting. I did that, but similarly with this in my living room. So I just love the really bright colors on this. And for me, Christmas is all about bright colors. And I just wanted to make the, the house look really bright and really cheerful. 
and to be honest in the end it looked a little bit like a Christmas grotto but that's absolutely fine with me so I really recommend making one of these I don't think you have to wait for Christmas you could literally make these for any occasion during the year and to be honest you could just keep it up if you wanted to you don't really have to have an occasion but yeah I'm really pleased with that so I really recommend it I made mine um, about a meter long but you can make them as long as you want basically the next thing that I wanted to show you today is something that I bought a kit to make so this is a homemade advent calendar so you may have heard me talking about this before on one of my previous videos. I bought a kit from Crafty So-and-So. It's the first time I've ever bought a kit like this and it was a kind of mini quilting type project I suppose but I haven't really done that much quilting on it. Um, so I decided to add these little hangers on the top. So I got this idea for adding the hangers on the top from Claire who makes things on, she's on YouTube and on Instagram so thank you very much Claire. So I wasn't really sure how I was going to hang it up before but yeah those are really really good so if you do make one of these then do add some little bits of ribbon on because then you've got options you can hang it, hang it up with two handles or four handles or you can just tuck them down the back if you don't want any handles at all so yeah this is I'll just hold this up so you can see so we've got a lovely winter scene on there I sewed on all of the different pockets I'll just hold this up so you can see we've got all the different numbers on there we've got some beautiful little Christmas trees and some snowy buildings and some people ice skating and I really like this because it means that William can bring it out year after year I can fill the pockets with different things you could put little sweets in there you could put little toys in there any kind of little surprises basically you could wrap up some tiny tiny little things whatever you would like little Lego characters or I don't know, Playmobil characters or I don't know, whatever whatever you would like basically. This year I didn't actually had, this year it was more for decoration rather than putting anything in the pockets because William is only four months old now. He, you know, wouldn't have been in a position to kind of take anything out of the pockets but I think certainly next year or, and maybe, you know, the year after or whenever he can look forward to using this calendar and it would be different to any of the ones that his friends have as well. I'm really impressed with the way that this project came together. Crafty So and So put a lovely blog on their website talking you through how to actually do the project. The actual printed kit did come with some instructions on the bottom of the fabric but they were quite basic and even as quite an experienced sewer like myself I was a little bit unsure about how to tackle this project and going on the instructions I was a little bit confused about what I actually had to do so the blog I found was really helpful so if you are doing one of these projects in the future then do check out the Crafty So and So blog because I, I did find that really good and um, the, the kit that I bought came with all the bits and pieces that you needed it came with the wadding it came with the backing fabric and of course the front section as well the only things that you needed to add on yourself were the cotton to stitch it with obviously your sewing machine and the little bits of ribbon that I added onto the top they were just a little extra so it's got a lovely green bright cotton on the back I would describe that as probably a cotton poplin or you could use a quilting cotton obviously and then um, yeah, it's like a quilting type cotton on the front but I don't know if they've still got any of these in stock after Christmas but if they have then I would recommend snapping one up and then you can make it you know in time for next year so yeah I was really really pleased with that and hopefully William will love it for years to come. The next things that I wanted to share with you today are some more bits and pieces that I made for the house in the run up to Christmas. So I decided to stock up on some Christmas cotton poplin type fabrics and I bought them in a range of different colours. Again, I bought them from Material Girl Fabrics. Again, they're based in Nottinghamshire. I will uh, put the details below of their name and then you can find them for yourself on Facebook if you would like to. So this is a Happy Holidays print that I bought. It's a, it's a green colour there. So you could literally use these cotton poplins for anything. And then I absolutely loved the other side there. Gingerbread men, Christmas puddings and Christmas trees. I just thought that was absolutely super and that just basically sings out to me what Christmas is all about. I just love food and love kind of baking and stuff for Christmas. So I really like that and then I, I topped it off with a bright red zip there as well. I made a range of different cushion covers so this is another one that I made. This one is the same on the front and the back 
and that's got little Christmas stockings on there. And then I added a bright green zip into that one. So I just thought that added another pop of color. So I just popped those ones down there. This one is very similar to the last one, but we've got the happy holidays on the front and the same on the back. And that one's got a bright green zip in there as well. So I did also make some other cushion covers, but I didn't want to kind of show you every single one that I made because I thought that might be a little bit boring. But I'm sure again in the future, I will make more festive cushion covers because I would have liked to have some to go onto my chairs in the dining room but I didn't really have a chance to do those ones. So maybe next year and yeah, we'll see what happens. But cotton poplin fabric is certainly really affordable to buy, really easy to sew up, don't have to concentrate too much and I just really enjoy working with it to be honest. The final thing that I wanted to share with you in today's video is a table runner. So again, you may be familiar with this if you did watch one of my previous videos. Table runners are an absolute staple in my house. Even though we're not allowed to have people over for dinner at the minute, the next time we are, I will be whipping out a table runner and dressing up my table that way. They don't have to just be for Christmas, they could be for literally any time of the year. I did make a few table runners for my wedding, uh, which was a few years ago now, but I've still got those and I still use them just to try and make the most out of them. But Christmas time is a great opportunity to make these for gifts for other people or of course for yourself as well. So thank you to everyone who did share some pictures with me of the table runners that you made for friends and family I really appreciate that if you would like to make a table runner for yourself then do check out my tutorial that's on my channel um, so this is my favorite one that I made I did make quite a few you can literally make these in under an hour if you'd like to definitely it's quicker than an hour if you've made one before and you know what you're doing there's no pattern required for this project and it they are super super speedy to do you can do them in any length that you would like to I decided to do this one in two meters which to be honest is probably slightly too long I think that my preferred length is either a metre or a metre and a half. So, I don't know, make them however long you want for your table. But I probably just got a little bit over over the top doing this one um, in two metres. But it did still look super on my table. So, I have made this in a beautiful dog print. So, I used the navy on the outside and then I used this lovely cream fabric on the inside. And again, it's a cotton poplin fabric and they just you can just sew them up in no time at all and you know they're just a big hit to be honest they just really add a little bit of festive cheer to uh, my table and I had one on my table in the run up to Christmas and then I had a different one on my Christmas tablecloth on Christmas day itself and I was actually hunting around for my Christmas tablecloth saying to my husband have you seen it have you seen it and he was like oh what does it matter what does it matter but to me, I love having a Christmas tablecloth on. So it did matter quite a lot. And when it was on, I was like, look, look how pretty it looks with my lovely table runner and our glasses and our plates and you know the bits and pieces that I'd cooked on Christmas day. And he was like, oh yes, it does, doesn't it? I was like, yes, it does. I love a Christmas table runner and a Christmas tablecloth. So I don't know how you dressed up your table for Christmas, but do let me know if you did use a table runner. But I do um, enjoy making bits and pieces for the house and like I said gifts for other people I'd love to hear what you made as gifts for other people this year so do leave me a comment below if you would like to share your ideas and your thoughts but I hope you've enjoyed watching today's video as I said at the beginning of the video this is only part one of my December makes I will be sharing part two very soon so do keep an eye out for that one but until next time I shall leave it there don't forget if you have enjoyed watching today please do hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you very soon bye Bye.